Welcome Capricorn, thank you for joining me for your monthly forecast for March for the Sun or the Ascendant. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be grateful if you did now. This month begins on the 2nd with Venus, the planet of love and affection, moving out of your sign where it's giving you a real boost in terms of your attractiveness and it moves into your second house. This is very much to do in a more spiritual way with how we feel about ourselves. So you could find yourself wanting to spoil yourself in some kind of way. And if you have an appreciation of good food and wine, it's certainly going to shine through in March. But also, Venus moving into this area can give your finances a boost. It could happen almost straight away. But the bigger picture this month is very much to do with everyday communication. These are the short, bright conversations we have with neighbours, with siblings, text messages, emails, buzzing backwards and forwards that give us a lot of stimulation. But Mercury is in this area too, and this rules this everyday communication, but does go into a retrograde on the 5th. It suggests that there could be some crosswires at some point this month, and it's going to be important, therefore, to try to break every slice of communication that you have, we all have, quite frankly, into little pieces that we can keep an eye on and make sure that things don't go awry. So far, so good. But Mercury in the third house also rules equipment, machines. Now that can be technology, it can be domestic appliances, it can also be modes of transport, strangely even cycles, bicycles if you like. So you could have some areas there where if something has been a really faithful servant to you in terms of reliability, Mercury's retrograde could see something need a service or perhaps you may even think of an upgrade. I'm one of those people who likes to think that Mercury retrograde can be a positive thing. So if there have been strains in a relationship with a sibling or a neighbour, why don't you see this as an opportunity to improve things by having an inclusive conversation with the, that person in the weeks to come? If you don't, there could be some misunderstandings or it could be an ongoing situation where you're just finding it hard to keep up with the pace of life, which can be quite frenetic with Mercury in the third house, and that can have a, uh, a, a more a draining impact on the nervous system. So rest is going to be important this month. But on the 6th, there is a new moon. And this new moon obviously gives you an opportunity to blend your emotional ideas or feelings with those more intellectual, bright, quick thoughts that we all have. But there is an added asset that falls into this new moon in the guise of Neptune. Neptune can give you an appreciation of the subtlety of communication in the following month, but Neptune can distort reality. So if you are talking about ideas, or you're having a conversation with someone, particularly with Mercury tracking backwards, it could be that you could get the wrong end of someone's stick. So it is going to be important to try to break everything down into individual pieces where you feel com comfortable and confident, but I would slow communication down where possible to make sure that you're not jumping to a conclusion or getting a bit confused about where someone's coming from. We've all looked at a text message or an email and thought on its initial read, well, oh, that's perhaps not quite as courteous or diplomatic as it could be. And then we can go back to it a couple of hours later and think, well, actually, it's fine. And it's just that moment of time where we make that quick assessment with our, our faculty of understanding can be a bit faulty. And that can definitely be influenced by the swirling mist which is Neptune. However, in your sign, we continue to have the two big beasts of the higher octave planets, the outer planets, in the guise of Saturn and Pluto. And from the 10th through to the 16th, Pluto is going to be forging an awesome 
angle to the sun. If ever there was a time to think about your belief systems, which the third house also rules to some degree, then not necessarily the more philosophical side of your ideas, but just your everyday thinking and interaction with people, this can be a fine time to transform things. But also if you need to promote or connect with people, you can be very passionate and show great conviction across that group of days as well. But it could be that you alter in your outlook because Pluto in your sign is seeing you physically, emotionally and psychologically changing and it will continue to occur for you for some years to come. However, from the 19th to the 24th, Pluto's linking with Mars. Now, Mars starts this month in a glorious location for you, one which is very much about being self-expressive, upbeat, even showing off the more uh, sexually alluring side of your nature. If you're a sporty Capricorn, this is a wonderful transit, but it's also great for getting out and about, socialising, being more playful, and also demonstrating your personality to the max. So I actually think March could be quite a vigorous time for you in so many different ways. But like I said before, when it comes to your nervous energy, your mental energy, do try to pace yourself. But also on the 6th, Uranus, the planet of surprises, of unpredictability, of freedom, independence, originality, and quite frankly, rebellion, returns back to the sign of Taurus. That had a five month sojourn through, the, through this part of your situation last year, but now it returns to Taurus for a seven year duration. This is going to have real implications for how you view your individuality. Because you're someone who is governed by the sign, of, by the uh, planet that is Saturn, your ruler, and Saturn is very much about caution, even though you can be very playful, particularly as you get older, at times you do have that more cautious, steady approach to situations. And what Uranus is going to do is ask you to break out of any situation which has really been limiting you in any way. Now, over the last seven years, and just beyond that, since 2010 for five months, and since 2011 full-time, apart from those five months last year, Uranus has been making its way through your home zone. And you may have demanded absolute right to control your space. So when you're close to people, when you, you have a bit of freedom, and this may have created some unusual home circumstances for you. But I think now, particularly when it comes to your love life, over the next seven years, you could be much more experimental, much more willing to break free of a relationship which isn't working or doesn't stimulate you. And you need to also demonstrate to people the more daring side of your nature, which might sound counterintuitive to a cautious, steady, methodical, hard-working uh, Capricorn, but you don't have to sacrifice any of those qualities. You just need to complement them with parts of your activities which see you open up and flourish. So this is a fantastic time for you to grow. And then from the 19th to the 24th, with Mars linking to Pluto, if ever there was a time when you construct your stuff, attract people to you, really radiate a massive sexual energy and charisma, it's across those days. Now, of course, on the 21st, we have the spring equinox. The sun returns to the start of its celestial journey in the sign of Aries, which for you is very much about home, family, emotion, security, physical or more personal, so your interior emotion. And on the same day, there is a full moon in the sign of Libra, which can see your emotions very close to the surface. So if there is something you're not particularly happy about that you need to deal with, the last 10 days of this month really are asking you to grapple with this by finding a good balance between how you operate in the wider world, but also how comfortable you feel about it. So even if you are being more demonstrative, affectionate, playful, sociable at times this month, I still feel by the end of the month it's going to come back to the base point of feeling safe. 
and feeling trusted or that you can trust the people who are immediately around you. And also Mercury is combining with Neptune in the last 10 days in a really shimmering link, which can see you wonderfully uh, self-expressive. It's a fine time to watch a movie, to take photography in, or perhaps go to a gallery, anything which really stimulates your mind. But if you are trying to write something down, whilst your man imagination can be hugely vivid, if you're trying to do uh, a letter to the state or to a bank, you need to be careful your accuracy is really spot on. Because remember, Neptune distorts, Mercury retrograde can cause mishaps. But by the 28th, Mercury's travelling forwards. By the 27th, Venus has travelled into, uh, into Pisces. The good fortune you've had financially can be transmuted much more into your self-expression. Generally, I do feel that this month is set up for so much positivity for you, Capricorn. And even if there are going to be bite-sized pieces, as I explore each week within the month, which may have their challenges, I think the big picture is something that you can relate to, buy into, and I really would recommend you do. But it is requiring you to flourish around your thinking, to evolve, to grow in some major ways. Now, for your in-depth personal horoscope forecast, combined with your character analysis, based on your time, date, and place of birth, if you've never, ever had these done, I really would uh, suggest you consider uh, doing so now. I'm offering a 30% discount on these two. And also, the forecast uses progressions and directions, a much more modern way of prediction, which links also to transits, which is much more traditional. And this is where we take each year of your life as being one degree and advance all your planets forwards and see how they interact with your natal horoscope and also transits that are going on now. It can provide some hugely insightful information to you. Please see the link beneath this video. But for now, I'd like to thank you for joining me. If you've yet to subscribe, as I said earlier, or like or comment, I'd be delighted if you did. Good luck and goodbye for now. Thank you. Hello, thank you so much for watching my video. I'd love you to join me at my Horoscope Ace app. You can find this at www.horoscope-ace.com. You can use it through Android, iOS, Apple or Facebook. Check out your Ascendant or your Moon site or download your free birth chart. There's all your favourite videos, plus there are daily, weekly, monthly and yearly horoscopes for general, love, Chinese and Indian astrology. If your passion is tarot, there's my brilliant three card money or love tarot readings too. And it's all there at www.horoscope-ace.com. Thank you.